What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. For over 9 months I have been consistently adding money into my Revolut stock portfolio where we have been buying different stocks, receiving dividends and then selling shares for either profit or loss. The portfolio was started on August 13 of 2020 with the first three positions of Western Digital, Intel and Pinterest. And the whole progress was and is currently being tracked using a public Google Sheets document. With the size of the portfolio increasing, the document also started getting more complicated. In a period of 9 months, we accumulated over 20 positions in different companies, with the size starting from $20 to $300 per position. But what was a good tracker for a few different stocks is no longer viable for that many positions. In order to have a better understanding on where the portfolio is moving and where should we be focusing, I believe that we were in the need of a huge update. It took me a few months of thinking and a few days of putting everything together, but now we have an updated portfolio tracker that will suit our needs. So with the power of video editing, this is the updated version. So this here is the updated version for the stock portfolio tracker. It looks a bit intimidating at first glance, but I will explain all the parts step by step. If you are interested, this is a public document, so you are able to make a copy and update the positions to your own needs. All I ask in return is a thumbs up on this video. And since that button is now blue, we can take a look into the functionality of the tracker. In the previous tracker, new positions were just added to the bottom, but now the positions are filtered by sectors and new ones will be added accordingly. So the portfolio is divided into 11 sectors. Communication services, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, energy, financials, healthcare, industrials, information technology, materials, real estate, and utilities. Also at the bottom of this table we have another important part, which will be dedicated to our cash position. Now let's take the first position in the communication services sector. So in first column we have the date when we started the position, then we have the logo for the company, company's name, ticker symbol and currency. The next column tells exactly how many shares do we own of this company. Then we jump over to the cost basis column and here is the amount of how much we have spent for this position, which in other words is the cost basis. And out of the cost basis and the number of shares we have, we get the average buying price we paid for each share. Just to the right of it, we have the market price, which shows the current price of a share for this particular company. And out of the market price and the number of shares that we own, the current market value for the position is calculated in the J column. So if we take the market value and subtract the cost basis, we are left with either a gain or a loss on the position. To make it more visually appealing, it is also color coded. So if we have a gain on the position, we will get a green color. If it is a loss the color will be red and if by any miraculous chance the difference is at zero we will get a yellow color. And in the column L we get the same difference but this time the value is in percentages. So we either get how many percentage points the position is up or how many percentage points it is lower. Column letter M is tracking the share price movement of the last 30 days. It is not a huge indicator, but it helps to determine if the price was recently in an uptrend or a downtrend. The next few columns show how much of diversification we have in the portfolio. Column N shows the positions weighting in the whole portfolio and column O shows its weighting in this particular sector. So taking the first line as an example, we can find that Google takes up 3.34% of our portfolio and then 17% of our exposure in communication services. These columns are also color coded, so if the position is less than 5% of the whole portfolio we get a color green, then if it is more than 5 but less than 9% we get a yellow color, and if one position is more than 9% of the whole portfolio, we get a warning with the color red. It is similarly done in the column for sector percentages. So if one position makes up less than 40% of one sector, it returns a green color. Then if it is over 40 but less than 70%, we get a color yellow. And if one position makes up of over 70% of that sector, then we again get a warning in red. These portfolio and sector percentage allocations are tailored to my current needs and they can easily be changed in your own copy. This last part of the table is dedicated to dividends. Since Google is not paying any dividends, we will take the next line which is AT&T. So in the Q column we can find that AT&T is currently paying $2.08 per share and that is a dividend yield of 6.46%. This column shows our yield on cost. And since we paid for the stock less than its current market price, 
our yield on cost is higher than the current dividend yield, and that is at 7.29%. Since this value is greater than the current dividend yield, we get it in the green color. If our yield on cost would be lower than the current yield, then it would show a warning in the color red. And the last column suggests how much we are paid in dividends for our position. Then if we scroll to the bottom right corner of the table, we get the annual dividend sum that the portfolio generates, and out of it we can calculate the portfolio's dividend yield. At the bottom of this big table there is a summary, and here we can check how much the portfolio is worth, how much we ourselves deposited, what is the difference and if we have a gain or a loss, and also the same gain or loss in percentages. Additionally, if we are interested, we can check the same numbers in euros. At the bottom of the table we can find a donut chart for the portfolio allocation in different positions. So we can quickly assess if any positions are taking too much or too little of exposure. Now if we go to the right hand side of the table, we can find 11 smaller donut charts that visually shows the portfolio allocations by different sectors. So we can find that we are nicely diversified in communication services sector, but we only have two positions in consumer staples and Walmart taking over 90% of it, and then for energy sector we have no positions as of yet. Another issue could be healthcare, where Johnson Johnson is 100% of our exposure in this sector. We have a similar problem with industrials, and we have nothing for both materials and real estate. So this should help us find our weak points and work towards it. At the bottom we can find another donut chart, and that is portfolio allocation by different sectors. But there is also this table to its left, which shows the current weighting percentages and compares it to our targets. And these are also color coded. So for example, our target for the communication services sector is 20% of our portfolio. And we currently have it at 19.67%. If the weighting is 1% over or under our target, we will get a color green. Then for the consumer discretionary sector, the target is at 10% and our current weighting is at 21.22% and here we receive the yellow color. This means if the current weighting is more than 1% over our target, then we get a yellow color which suggests that we are overweight in this sector. Now let's take healthcare as the third example. So our target here is 12% and the current weighting is at 3.43%. This gives us a red warning, so if the current weighting is more than 1% percent below of our target, then the red color suggests that we need to take action and increase on this sector. The interesting part is that you can adjust these sector allocation targets to your own needs, just make sure that it sums up to 100% at the bottom of this table. The small chart under the table shows my 5 year goal for the portfolio, which is currently set to $18,500. And in 9 months we made some progress with under $3000. But your own 5 year goal is likely way different from mine and this chart can be easily adjusted. Then there is also the small table that shows the progress every year. So in 2020 we saw a gain of $116.22 which on our investment of over $1200 was an increase of 9.22%. And there is still more than half a year to go for 2021 but we can check that we currently have a gain of $145.28 and on the investment of almost $2600 there is growth of 5.69% and that is also represented by this chart where the blue part shows the money that we have added and the green part are the gains that we managed to make. Maybe later on we could also compare it to the S&P. Just underneath there is also this gauge which shows how much progress we made towards financial freedom. Since my goal is $300,000, we still have a long way to go for it. But your own end goal could be different and this can also be adjusted. The last part I want to show is these two columns, where I track the dates and the sums of how much I'm depositing in. So I'm still sticking with the $60 per week plan, and so far I have deposited $2460. Maybe our deposit scheduling is different, but the idea remains the same. So that was it, I think I properly introduced the updated portfolio tracker. Keep in mind that this is a public Google Sheets document, so you can make a copy and adjust it to your own needs. Feel free to add a comment if you are getting any troubles using it. I will gladly look into it and try to help you out. All I ask in return is a thumbs up under the video as it helps the channel a lot. If you want to know how I am picking companies for my portfolio, then consider checking a few stock comparison videos, I will put a few recent ones on the screen. And that was it from my side, thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all in the next one.